Hi, I'm Glenn Everett, Master of Machines. This episode, we visit Oldsmar, Florida, USA. We visit Aussie car enthusiast Matt Clark and his wife Sherry. We check out Matt's insane twin turbo Mustang and test drive Sherry's Ferris Bueller Ferrari replica. And be sure to subscribe to our channel for more awesome content coming your way. Matt and Sherry, it's fantastic to be here in Oldsmar, Florida, USA. Thank you so much for having us. Not a problem at all, bud. So, Matt, I believe you moved to the USA around about eight years ago. Being an Australian car enthusiast over here, it must be a different world. Tell us about how that all took place. That's right, Glenn. Moved over in 07. I actually met uh, Sherry online in 06. I moved over here to set up as a licensed builder. The economy was really, really flat here. And I had a couple of guys in Australia say to me, hey, look, you're on the ground over there. You built multiple cars back before I'd moved here anyway. And I had a you know, bit of an automotive history. They asked me whether I could go and inspect a car for them. Uh, you know, the Aussie way. So I went down and uh, actually you know, went right over this car with a fine tooth comb and we actually videotaped it and sent the video back to him. He's like, this is sensational. Like, I was expecting like a couple of photographs. So we basically got his car and we helped him ship it and he was really happy. And then another guy contacted me through that guy and then it just sort of spread to where we had to set up this company to accommodate it. And Sherry, I believe you travel far and wide when it comes to looking for cars for the, these Australians in, in need of an American classic car. When you're dealing with a specific dream, you know, somebody wants a specific, you know, Camaro has to have this engine. We will search all over the United States and not until we find it, that's when we'll go and travel and get out there and have a look at it. You've got two cars behind us here in the background. Tell us a bit about them. Let's start with the Mustang first, Chaotic. Yeah, Chaotic uh, we built back in 2010 for the SEMA uh, show. The only reason we chose to build that car was because a lot of the editors around the world, magazines and a few other shows, uh, when I asked, can it be done with the twin turbos and leaving the towers in, uh, they said it was physically impossible and I'm like, challenge accepted. What I like the most about Chaotic is it's just out there. It was a build that uh, I couldn't step outside the boundary. It was a Keiko GT. Uh, and it's one of those cars you don't really mess with too much. So I had to keep it as um, concourse underneath as possible that it could be reversed with the red oxide primer. But going with the big wheels, 20 inches, air ride, twin turbos, pure white leather interior, white carpet, and the thing that just gets me every time is the horsepower. It's phenomenal. It's absolutely phenomenal. I've always wanted a V8 twin turbo and that's it. What I like most about the Ferrari would have to be that it's a convertible. I'm a convertible girl, and what better place to drive around in a convertible than in Florida? We're blessed with the sun most of the year. Um, the other thing that I love about it is very unique. You don't see one driving around every day, and it turns a lot of heads. But just the car itself, it's comfortable to drive, it's fun to drive. I love it. Well, you two make a fantastic team. There's no shortage of passion for cars. How about we take a look? Why not? Let's do it. Nineteen sixty one Ferrari two fifty GT California. Matt, tell us about this machine. What is going on here? Well, mate, this is a, uh, a 61 that's taken me about 10 years to locate. I saw the movie uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off and always thought that what an amazing car. We actually found the car up in Idaho after that long search and Sherry actually sold her Shelby to buy this car in pieces. She loves it. Absolutely, this is... How could you not? <laughs> yeah, I, now that I've had it, I feel like I'm 16 again. I actually enjoy driving this car like any other car. I've never had the feeling I've had with this car. Uh, the guy that was actually selling it had three of them and uh, he actually gave us all the documentation and we, to verify what it was and it was one of the, the batch that were made for the movie. A few little differences between this one, this has the Heights independent rear end with the inboard discs. Uh, the ones in the movie were actually a straight axle 9 inch or an 8.5 inch cut down to suit the body. What about the drivetrain? What about the power plane? I had a few engines floating around, 408 sitting in the corner. Uh, so we thought we'd spike it up a little bit, Edelbrock heads, lifters, the whole thing. Um, Did they have V8s in the movie cars in some of Yeah, they were running 289s or 302s okay. in, in yep. the actual cars. And we've gone 408 with a 351. I did go with the option of a Jag V12. We had the Tremec TKO 600, bolted that straight in there. Drive shaft's about 30 centimetres long. And it basically delivers every piece of horsepower to the back end. Now, I would imagine you get some amazing attention in this car because the real deal, or a genuine Ferrari in this type of specification, 
is said to be worth something like eight million dollars. Is that correct? Yeah, a uh, shabby one you pick up for between one, two mil. Uh, last one I heard sold at uh, one of the auctions belonged to an actor at twelve mil. Um, yeah, so they're, they're, they're kind of sought after. The original Ferraris built in Italy were a good uh, hundred of them made, I believe. I love like, the number plates too. The number plates look yeah. awesome. The original was supposed to be uh, nervous, like in the movie, and I thought that's a bit corny, you know, you got a Ferrari. Or the... So she came up with Sick Day, and it is. Once you get in this car, it's sick. I, I mean, I love the car. So, mate, how would we go about having a drive of such a car? No, mate, no. No, I don't think so. Why not? Because you're not, mate. I want the car back in the garage right now. Why, mate? What do you think's going to happen to it? It could get wrecked. It could get scratched. It could get breathed on wrong. It could have a pigeon crap on it. I'll take extra special care of it. Trust me. You have nothing to worry about. I'm a professional. Glenn, no, no, no. No, Glenn. Glenn, no. No, bad idea, Glenn. GT250 Ferrari, California. Of course, we'd all like a real one, but at around about $8 million these days, US, I don't think that's going to happen for too many people. I'll be more than happy to have this thing. In fact, I'd probably rather this thing over just about any car I've got. These things are so damn rare, hardly made any of them. So the original version of these cars had a beautiful little V12, 3 litre, about 280 horsepower, would have revved up hard, would have been music to the ears. But nothing quite like a 408 cubic inch stroke, 500 horsepower winter. Gets my heart racing, and for a fraction of the cost of that beautiful Italian stallion that come out of the Ferrari factory. This car would have to weigh stuff all. <laughs> we don't know the exact weight, but it'd have to be somewhere around eight or 900 kilograms. So power to weight, she's one mean machine. On top of that, she's a torque monster. Can't be cubic inches for that massive low down torque in a lightweight car. You know this engine makes you work, makes you work hard for your money with a very satisfying result. She's a grumpy little machine. Big engine, big camshaft, five-speed gearbox, 408 cubic inches. That's massive in a car of this weight and this size. With 500 horsepower and a whole mountain of torque, just wants to light the tyres up. Accelerates like an absolute bullet, like the space shuttle. It really is a deserving package in this vehicle. You couldn't have something looking like this car with a box stock economy version of an engine. It's got to be an angry son of a bitch. And that's what this thing is. She laps around, she bumps around. Not a smooth ride when it comes to the engine, but you know what? Who cares, man? <laughs> That's exactly what we're looking for. Something that gets the heart racing. A beautiful place. The view 
views, the scenery around here. I've never seen anything quite like it. I love Australia. I love this place too. You know, the one thing I've noticed about this car, people are breaking their necks to look at it. Doing their daily business, jogging, walking along on this nice sunny day, they spot this thing and look, what the? They probably think I'm some multi-millionaire driving an $8 million Ferrari, but the sad truth is I'm a car enthusiast that's virtually broke because I've spent every cent I've ever made on my cars. <laughs> Let's revel in it while we can, eh? <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. Yeah, baby. That sunshine, <laughs> no roof, sunny Florida, it doesn't get any better. Now that's what I call the ride of a lifetime. Thanks for watching and we'd really appreciate it if you'd like and comment on this video. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and click the notifications bell because there's a lot more content coming your way.